You feel rushed about something right now, don't you? You do. I know you do. There's something that you should have done that last week and it's not done. And now you're rushing around. You're in your car. You're running late. You're doing your makeup, by which I mean just putting on a little bit of lip gloss because that's all you have time for and you're running out the door. You feel rushed about something because we all do. And let me just tell you something that I have been doing for a year or so now that has changed my life is I stopped feeling rushed all the time. And this, what this does is this fuels that sense of yourself of being confident, of being a leader. Because here's the thing, all of the girl boss people, all of the Instagram influencer motivational people, they all tell you that you need to be confident, you need to be fearless, you need to be brave. But then they leave it at that. They just have their cute little memes and images on Instagram. <laughs> well, but, but how? But how, like if, if, if I'm, let's say I'm a stay-at-home mom, I never see anyone. I never get to go anywhere because last time I did, one of my kids had this diaper issue that, you know, anyway, I feel like the people at the health department have forgiven me. We're on <laughs> a healing journey with that. Um, the, you know, it's like, well, I mean, how do, you, how do you feel confident when you just don't have a lot of opportunities to exercise that? Confidence isn't a feeling. You know, I mean, like if someone says, Jen, are you confident to lead an expedition to Mount Everest? No, I'm not, you know, and I shouldn't be. So confidence comes from doing things. Fearlessness comes from doing things. But if you live a typical suburban life or if you're a college student or you're a suburban mom or whatever, you just don't have as many opportunities to do the things that would make you feel like a fearless and bold and confident person. So this whole thing of just not rushing is actually the key to you feeling that sense of courage and confidence. I know you're skeptical. You're saying, Jen, so I just reject the feeling of being rushed. And then suddenly I feel like a girl boss. I feel like a bold leader. Yes, I'm telling you, that is actually how it works. So that is what we will talk about in today's episode. As usual, we get to the main topic in the second half of the show. In the first half of the show, I, I'm, I'm going to share a theory with you guys that I'm dead on right about. I am 100% right. I have decades of personal experience with this, but it's it's controversial in the sense that it's it's hard to prove. But I have a mountain, a veritable <laughs> mountain of anecdotal evidence that this is a thing that happens. And here here is my theory that when women are taking steps to put themselves out there in any way, so that could be meeting a new friend for lunch, starting an Instagram account, trying to get their poetry published, anything that involves putting themselves out there in any way. I, my observation is a large percentage of us, let's say 70% of women are susceptible to this. Subconscious mechanisms get put into place that cause distressing physical symptoms to try to stop you. I have seen so many women, so many women who are meant to put themselves out there in some ways, authors, musicians, whatever, so, some way that they would be seen on a bigger level, volunteering at their kid's school, anything like that, who when it comes time to do it, they have unexplained physical symptoms, illnesses that no one can diagnose, chronic pain, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, things like that. Just just a general feeling of weariness. You can't get out of bed. I am convinced that that is your subconscious trying to hold you back because it feels dangerous to put yourself out there. And I have a lot of experience with this. I had, I, I talked a long time ago about how I had chronic pain so severe. It was shutting down my life. I almost had to quit my radio job at Sirius XM not, not for the reasons I did end up quitting, but uh, it, but be, be just sheer, simply because of the pain. I it, it was ruining my life. It was all consuming. Anyone who knew, who knew me knew I dealt with it. It would be like, oh, Jen's having a bad pain day today. She's out of commission. It 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 was really kind of the defining thing about me for most of my thirties and really into into my twenties a little bit. 
as well. And it ended up being something that was subconscious and psychological in root. And now, now I don't have any of that chronic pain anymore once I dealt with the psychological mechanisms behind it. So some people don't want to believe this is true. Some people reject this, but I, I have an obligation to tell you guys awesome things that have helped my life. So I'm going to tell you my theory. And, and I was reminded of it when we filmed promo videos for my <laughs> tour this weekend. Yeah. We will be talking about that. I am headed to New York and Pittsburgh this weekend. Yeah. This weekend, I will be there right after that is Vegas. After that is DC, Boston, and Philadelphia, and a bunch more cities after that. Play the jingle, Caitlin, where people can find out my fabulous website. That that's really the best jingle in the world. Also, <laughs> yeah. that link jfcomedytour.com is in the show notes, along with the YouTube link jfonyoutube.com, which is where you can see this episode and all others on YouTube as well. You can see what my hair looks like when I air dry it. That is that is the <laughs> hair look that I am rocking today. If you are a new listener, welcome to the Jen Fullbiler Show. I am coming to you from Austin, Texas. My name is Jen, and I am a stand-up comic, best-selling author, and mom of six. I had six babies in eight years. This podcast is where you learn the art of the village hustle. That's being a hot girl, girl boss who knows that love and family and community are the foundation of all true success. Caitlin is our fabulous producer. We publish new episodes every single Wednesday morning. And we also have a Patreon where you can get fabulous bonus content. That link is also in the show notes and it's patreon.com slash this is Jen. Love our Patreon community. We uh, we have that new village hustle level where I, I do makeup or cook or something like that. I'm creating something while I'm sharing tips. It's really a lot of fun. You can get in on that, get all the bonus content. And we do an after party after every episode where we just keep the cameras rolling and and then keep talking about this subject or others. And you can also, uh, again, find all of that on Patreon. What? Oh, oh, I was going to tell you, I read every iTunes <laughs> review person. I was like, what? What? There's something else I was going to say. Oh, 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 listen, listen. So I told you I read every iTunes, Apple podcast review personally, and I'm starting to read the YouTube comments too. That is now another way to get in touch. Um, somebody left a glowing review saying she loves this podcast from Lagos, Nigeria. Let me just tell you, I'm calling it now. Don't say that Jen didn't say this because Jen did say this. She said it today in the <laughs> September 2023 podcast episode second week of September I'm going to have a Lagos tour stop one day and I feel like I'm going to do really well there because my little network of Catholic underground <laughs> Catholic ghetto people it extends worldwide and I've got a little squad in Lagos you would be surprised how many people from Nigeria follow me on Instagram I'm huge in Nigeria at least that is my perception <laughs> so I'm telling you I have wanted to go to Lagos for so long and I feel like I'm going to make it happen and um, I'm just calling it now that sooner rather than later I will go to Lagos and I'm going to have a hit show and it's going to be amazing and I'm just I want you to know that that is on my vision board and I am convinced that it would be a really successful show now if it wasn't there would be a lot of downside to that <laughs> to go all the way to Nigeria and I'm just sitting in Lagos with like my two fans who showed up. But I know that one would show up because I just got an Apple podcast review from Nigeria. So I'm so she would be there. So I would have one. I've, oh, yeah. You know what? I'll fly out there just for you. I've heard great things. I'd love to visit. We're coming um, on vacation. Yeah. Exactly. Caitlin will come with me. Yeah. We'll bring all of our kids. It'll be amazing. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so thank you for all the podcast reviews, especially, um, my massive Nigerian fan base. Um, <laughs> okay. So this weekend, uh, <laughs> I, I chose to turn a, something that was frustrating to me into something positive. I was actually talking about this, uh, on my Village Hustle Patreon that uh, I was talking about it while I was doing makeup, that 
I got frustrated because the the venues that I go to on my tour, they always want promo videos. They always want shout out videos. It does not matter if the thing is 99% sold or 1% sold. They, I think they like it because it just gets the word out about their venue. And usually what they're imagining is I turn my camera on selfie mode and I say, hey guys, it's Jen Fulweiler. I'm headed to Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. I'll be there on November 1st, you know, th- that sort of thing. I don't like doing those because they're not fun. I don't think, you know, they're, they're, I don't think they're that successful. Because if I hadn't heard of someone, if someone just said, hey, it's Bob Smith, I'll be in Austin, <laughs> Texas, come to the show. It's like, why? You don't seem funny. I mean, you, any <laughs> random guy could make that video. I mean, one of my neighbors could make that video. I, th- this is not an endorsement for this person's work <laughs> at all. So me being me, uh, my, my manager w- was saying, he was like, hey, a bunch of these venues want promo videos. And I reacted with hostility because I I am I I'm I'm just a difficult person. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I just get my ideas and I overcomplicate things. But then I realized this is actually on me. This happens during every tour. This it's I need to work on my pattern recognition because the, I mean, how many tour seasons have I done now? Mm-hmm. Eight and. Each, each tour season, I do at least 10 cities, sometimes significantly more. And every time I'm surprised when they want a promo video. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> no way. This, no. <laughs> and at some point, you have to point the finger back at yourself. You know, you have to realize that the problem is you, <laughs> that you keep being surprised by this. So listen, I listen to the Grind Set Hustle trillionaire mindset people on Instagram. So I know that I need to take things that are difficult for me and turn them into wins. So I decided to turn this into a win by saying, okay, I will get you a promo video, but it will be epic. And it will be something that is a lot of fun for me. And it makes me seem like a fun person to the people in your city. If this venue posts it on their Facebook and on their Instagram, even people who don't know me might say, wow, that's insane. Uh, This woman seems crazy. I'm crazy. So let's go show up to her show. Um, Now, a skeptical mind could say I overcomplicated it because all these people wanted was for me to put my camera on selfie mode (laughs) and say, hey, I'm coming to San Antonio in October. Tobin Center. Come on out. That's all they asked for. And instead, I took approximately 12 hours out of my life, Caitlin's life, our children's lives. So that that's a lot of man hours that if it, <laughs> if you take us, let's say, let's say there, there were, I think, seven people involved in this. When you count all of our kids who ended up, it's like, well, now we need lighting. Okay. Well, now we need someone to hold the, a shade so that the light will work. Okay. Well, actually now we need someone to hold this prop and run up and, and say this and get the other props ready. I, I mean, the man hour, it's it's seven times 12. What is that? 80 something. It's 80 <laughs> something. Um, 84, I believe. Uh, that is 84 man hours that I put into this when I could have put 84 seconds into it. <laughs> so that is, that's me. That is how I roll. But it, I'm leading up to my point about chronic pain. Again, stick with me, new listeners, this podcast. <laughs> it's a wild ride. You following this podcast is like the little elves taking the ring to Sauron. I really need to read that book. It's been on my list forever. Um, the little short people... They've got a ring and they have to take it somewhere. I do know that. Uh, And that's like listening to this podcast. It's like there are goblins, there are dragons, but we do eventually get there. We we get there to to the the burning eye at the end of the episode. That's the symbolism (laughs) of my hot fire, incredible point that we get to at the the end of the episode. The burning eye was a good guy, right? Well, what I'll read the book. Listen, yeah, like all the, I feel like it was a friendly burning eye. It was like, come on over to my mountain. You know, I'd love to get a ring. Like we can hang. I love rings. You love rings. Okay, I, I'll read it. Look, I know I'm Catholic. Like it's like I could actually get excommunicated for the fact that I haven't read that book. Okay, it was kind of long. You know, it's, all right. Listen, but I read motivational books. Okay, so you guys are reading Tolkien. You're reading classic literature. 
like the Lord of the Rings, I'm reading trillionaire grind set books. So listen, when when I'm a multimillionaire in my private jet and you're just sitting around talking about the plot of Lord of the Rings, you'll be like, I really I should have read the books that Jen was reading, you know, to be honest. OK, <laughs> so um, never in a thousand years could I have imagined the toil, the difficulty and the abject misery that would have got gone into creating these videos the texas heat reached a crescendo of suck this weekend <laughs> it was so bad caitlin was it not oh, so bad it was terrible it was so bad and because these videos will run in fall and in order for them to get attention, I need to dress up. I need to dress with some flair. If I'm just in jeans and a t-shirt, hey guys, come at it, you'll scroll right past it if you don't know me. It's that's not attention getting. So I wore my my bright red outfit, the one from the new podcast logo, by the way. I wore my bright red outfit, my plastic pants. <laughs> that was where I went wrong. Yep. <laughs> that was where I went wrong. Listen. If you are ever thinking about wearing your $6 plastic pants <laughs> from Sheen outdoors for six hours when the heat index is 105 degrees. Do not do it. That material actually becomes a biohazard. <laughs> it, it, it is a like hazardous waste materials. You know how they have on the back of the cargo 18 wheelers it's like this is you know if you're a fireman this is code 368 this is <laughs> nuclear waste they need to put those on this when they're exposed to heat the process of taking off my plastic sheen pants <laughs> at the end of this outdoor texas heat filming was not like taking off any other pants it there was scraping involved this was surgical not just undressing Worst experience of my life. <laughs> I've never been so sweaty. I think I lost 20 pounds of sheer sweat. And what's funny is in these videos, now I look like a wet dog, but kind of in drag because I had a lot of makeup on. So I look horrible. My face is red. Beads of sweat are actually like messing up my my false lashes. Like I have these really dramatic false lashes on, but now they're kind of falling off because they're beads of sweat coming in, uh, into my forehead and into my eyes and my hair is a mess it's it's flat it's wildebeest hair it looks worse <laughs> than it does right now it's like wet in some spots but not in others I, i'm i'm telling you the misery that we <laughs> experienced and again all they asked for was a shout out and i could have stood in my kitchen and been like hey guys i'm coming to boston come check out the show click text it to my manager and we're done but no no jen has to have vision she has to have like some epic it was so it it was it was it was so insane so i have a personal i have a personal favor turn on the personal favor sound effect let's hit that personal favor when you see these videos it, it'll be me in the red um, top in the red jacket and tank top and then the plastic pants and I'll be promoing different cities. I don't care what city you're in. I don't care if this is your city. Would you please like and leave a comment on that? Like great work guys. Like just anything to get this up in the algorithm because if I do not sell more tickets from doing these promos, I'm committing seppuku. I'm sorry. <laughs> like there's no, uh, th that's not my worldview, you know, that you, that you have to disembowel yourself due to dishonor. Like that's more of an ancient Japanese thing. But honestly, I, I would have to like get there. If we did all of this work and the algorithm buries it because it can tell it's a promo and so nobody sees it and I don't sell more <laughs> tickets. I'm sorry, it's seppuku time. So you guys, that's what's at stake. That's what's at stake. So you need to like and comment and just share it. Like even if you don't have friends in the city that I'm doing the promo for, just share it with anyone. I mean, just some like share it with uh, Kylie Jenner. Just DM it to her <laughs> because the algorithm sees how many shares they get. It doesn't matter who you share it to so share it with kylie jenner you know share it with reese witherspoon she might want to come out you never know share it with taylor swift just dm it to somebody so that the <laughs> algorithm boosts my posts because i 
have got to sell tickets from these videos. So then, so then on top of everything else, once we were all done, in multiple of them, I said the wrong date. So you will see that some of them are dubbed like a bad movie. My lip, like for Salt Lake City, I mean, my lips are so clear. I said I will be in Salt Lake City September 20th <laughs> and September 21st. But I, I can't redo it. Like, we'll all die if I re we, we cannot redo this. Um, but <laughs> I'm going to have to dub over like October 20th and October 21st. It's not going to match my lips at all. The one that, it, that it actually should be up by the time you hear this, check out my Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram. You should see the one for New York City. I said September 13th, but then I dubbed 15th <laughs> over it. So it's really lame. <laughs> so you watch it closely, or maybe you already noticed. Watch it closely, and you can see that my lips say 13th. But then it's like 15th, which is recorded <laughs> later. It's so stupid. So like I go through all this work and then it doesn't even like I mess it up because then because I got so overwhelmed with the heat and, and the kids. And I will say, so I ended up paying all of our kids to help with this. And this isn't the main point of me bringing this up. But just as a side note, I want to remind you all once again that when you follow your dreams on a big or small level, it blesses your family more than you could possibly imagine. And let's even take it down a notch. Following your dreams sounds very big and grand. You're like, well, what are my dreams? I, right now my dream is to like get these crumbs off of the sweatpants <laughs> I've been wearing for three days. Okay, just let's say when you do something fun that just makes your life a little e electric, it's just fun, your family will love to get in on it. So I filmed these tour promo videos and and it but I realized I got myself in over my head this was way more complicated than I thought it would be and I was stressing out and I was getting upset about it that like man I, I had Caitlin come all the way up here for this filming but that we, we're just shorthanded I mean that you can't see my face because the light's not right but who's going to hold the light because Caitlin's doing something else and then I looked around and I was like oh I've got five kids at home. Caitlin's got, we have nine kids who could help here. So I just handed out $5 bills. I realize I am underpaying my child labor wildly here, having them standing out in the sweltering heat, like five hours of work for $5. Like the, the sweatshops would be proud. They're like, yeah, that's how we do it, Jen. Good job. Um, right? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're child labor queen. Um, and, and I realized I really needed their help. And Caitlin and I went to them and we said, hey guys, I know you're having fun playing and fighting and hitting each other with things and getting out the glue and putting it all over the table. And why is that glitter out? And we're never going to get this clean. Looks like you're having fun, but seriously, we need help. Can you come help? Those kids ran over there. They had so much fun and they actually added a bunch of good ideas. So the premise of a lot of the videos you will see is I'm saying, get in loser, like from the movie Mean Girls, like get in loser, we're going to wherever, whatever city I'm going to. Then I open my minivan door, but a different thing happens for each city. So each video is a little different. I only had four ideas and I have 12 cities to hit. But then the kids started saying, like my son was like, what if I dressed up in a banana costume and just <laughs> popped down from the sunroof? And I was like, let's do it because I need promo yeah. videos. He ended up coming up with the best ideas. Caitlin's kids, my kids, they had all of these different spins on the videos they were doing. Honestly, when I say we couldn't have done it without these kids, that is not to make them feel better. We couldn't have done it. And they had a blast and they made their five whole dollars for like hours <laughs> a of, of a hard, hard labor in the sweltering sun because they had to stand outside with the camera. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. The heat index is 105. <laughs> sorry about that, kids. Um, but really, I mean, they had a blast. They felt so important. They felt excited that they got to contribute. So listen, let me tell you, if you are one of those moms who gets excited about fun ideas but then gets yourself in way over your head and it's a mess and everything is swimming in chaos, this is going to make you the greatest mom ever because you will need your kids' help. And as long as you maintain a fun attitude, as long as you don't unravel and start screaming at everyone, <laughs> which is tempting, but don't do it, as long as you continue to have fun with it, your kids 
will love bailing you out. They will have so much fun with it and they will develop new skills. I was actually just talking to Caitlin's son. How old is he? Uh, he's about to be nine yeah so he's he's eight years eight years old and I said listen you you really have an eye for directing you really have an eye for film like way beyond your years so you might want to think about this and like I'm sorry I'm telling your kid to be a radio tv and film major (laughs) Caitlin I'm sorry I shouldn't be like you have an eye for being an accountant or like some sort of (laughs) stable job (laughs) but but they really do they realize that they are good at things they develop Mm -hmm. their own skills by bailing you out of the crazy things that you got yourself in over your head with so lean into it if that's the kind of mom you are the scatterbrain scatterbrain let's do something fun and jump in and just make a mess and it will be imperfect society would tell you that that's not being a quote unquote good mom because your house is not perfectly tidy and organized and everything's not all perfectly planned all the time but forget what society says my kids can tell you from their work (laughs) on these promos videos promo videos that it is a lot of fun to jump in with your parents to their crazy ideas you know they I, i always say that probably the greatest gift you could give your kid is a parent who's having fun. So give your kids the gift of a parent who's having fun. Be yourself, have fun. Okay, now here is the main point. This is the main point of what uh, of what I was going to say about filming these videos. So I woke up feeling profoundly tired, really tired, chronic fatigue syndrome type tired on the morning we were supposed to film. And I, I just felt just not good i mean it, it it was like my blood wasn't even flowing or something it it was just it was just this bad feeling and i had some back pain and things like that and luckily i i realized i said i know what this is i have touched on this before i don't bring it up a, a lot because for some reason this is a little controversial i think people don't like to hear about this topic, especially the people who most need to hear about this topic are the ones who least like to hear about it. So what I was experiencing that morning when we were about to film these crazy promo videos is called tension myositis syndrome. It's called TMS. If you're interested in it at all, you need to read the books by Dr. Sarno. And he he was an MD doctor not like doctor of crystals from boulder (laughs) university school of hippies you know like he was a doctor doctor and um he basically he noticed that he kept having patients with all of this really severe back pain but surgery didn't do anything and they would they would do all the right things and the back pain was still there he also noticed that it was hitting his clients in their 30s and 40s way more than clients who were 80 or 70 And he thought, well, that's strange. It just seems like as you go on in life, if your back is really that bad, wouldn't the pain be worse as you age? But the people who are in the most pain are people in their 30s and 40s. And he genuinely wanted to help his patients. And he realized that there are psychological mechanisms that can lead to real pain. Very, very important distinction. This is not in your head. It is not psychosomatic, like like you're not really in pain. The pain is absolutely real. I know I dealt with it for 15 years. It is legit 100% real. Um, But it is is not caused by like a physical, you know, if someone punches you in the arm, okay, well, you're in pain. And that's from a very direct physical cause. This pain is caused by mechanisms of your subconscious. And it, it's weird that people have trouble getting on board with this because we know that the mind can cause physical symptoms. For example, if you're about to do public speaking, would you not feel some physical symptoms? If you are about to walk on stage, you have got hundreds of people getting silent and they will be staring at you and you have to go deliver a speech, what would you feel? You'd probably feel butterflies in your stomach, right? You'd, fe- you'd feel a little bit nauseated. Okay, well, that is a psychological cause. We know that the mind can cause tummy aches and stomach issues and and gastrointestinal stuff when we're really nervous, like for public speaking. So why are we skeptical that that can happen in other areas, in other areas of life, going through different parts of life? That There's a really interesting study. You can look this up. They did, um, so some people had chronic knee pain 
and they did a they did a study where they did surgery on half the people and on the other half of the people get this Caitlin they they just made an incision but they didn't actually do the surgery and the recovery rates were about the same between oh, wow. both groups the recovery rates are about the same there's another story of a guy this is clinically written up this is a story it's it's verified that he showed up uh in the emergency room because he'd overdosed on some drugs. He was part of a clinical trial for a drug. So he overdosed on the drug because he was, uh, I think he broke up with his girlfriend. So he showed up, his heart rate was skyrocketing. It was it was insane. He was vomiting, cold sweats. Uh, he was convulsing. I mean, you, there was this whole long list of, of symptoms that, that he had that were very serious, measurable symptoms. So they called the people who were running this drug trial and said, what is it? How do we reverse it? They looked up the guy's name. He was on the placebo. Oh, no. He was taking sugar <laughs> pills. Um, you can find one example after another of how your, uh, like the clinical things like that, the, this emergency room people, they wrote this up, that the surgery thing, that was a, that was a study. It's, I, I should have looked it up. It's published somewhere. You can look it up. Um, but there are a bunch of studies along these lines that show that what's going on up here in your mind can absolutely impact your physical body. Here's why I bring this up. I think that... How do I come at this? I think that women especially... I think that women especially are susceptible to chronic pain when they are putting themselves out there in any way. I have seen this happen a lot. When a woman is starting a new endeavor that will involve any kind of public exposure, broadly defined, that sounds wrong. I don't mean, <laughs> I, I mean like <laughs> like you're, you're, you're putting your ice cream business on Instagram and you are going to personally do some video. I don't mean OnlyFans. I mean, you know, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but kidding. or like they're going to do public speaking. They're going to perform their music. They're going to read their poetry. God forbid stand-up comedy. Um, <laughs> very often, very often when I see friends or Instagram acquaintances or whatever, when I see them going to the next level, if the next level involves an increased amount of eyeballs on them, so to speak, they start having physical symptoms. This is so common, I can almost put it on the calendar. I, a, a friend of mine got a, a really cool comedy opportunity very clear it was going to take her career to the next level. It was going to put her in front of so many people. It, it was really cool. I, I actually thought, I was like, I wonder if she'll have chronic pain. Two weeks later, she's on Instagram saying, you know, guys, uh, say a prayer for me. I just got back from the hospital. They're running MRIs. They can't find anything. Um, we don't know what it is, but these these headaches are debilitating. I can't get out of bed. Um, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it was something else. I'm not saying, obviously, I cannot say definitively what was going on with that gal, but I remember thinking, yeah, I bet in a couple of weeks, the chronic pain is going to hit. And I know this, this is, this is, whenever I say this, this is met with a lot of skepticism. But again, I would not be doing my podcast listeners a service if, if I weren't honest about this, because I almost shut down my whole career because of chronic pain. When I was on the radio, the pain that I was having was so extreme that, I mean, there was a time when Joe found me writhing on the floor of the closet. Uh, I On a scale of one to 10, the pain was a 10, and I've done natural childbirth and had epidurals that did not work. <laughs> Never work with a hot anesthesiologist. Just, I'm, I'm just telling you, don't work with that. I, as soon as she walked in, I was like, she's too hot. She has not had to work for anything in her life. And, I, and it didn't work. It didn't work. It paralyzed my legs. Okay, sorry. That was a tangent. Don't work with hot anesthesiologists. Um, the pain was a 10. And I, I was, I, I should, so one of these days, I should collect, if I could find them somewhere, all of the ER bills that we had from my 30s. I was in urgent care and the ER I don't, like a few times a year. And it turns out it was TMS. It was tension myositis syndrome. It was psychological in, in cause. And my theory about why this happens, and, and I think it 
particularly happens to, again, women when there is an increased amount of putting yourself out there, so to speak. My theory is, uh, you guys, need, hey, hit the Jen's going into human evolutionary theory oh. button. It's not an episode if we don't do that. <laughs> That's our special sound effect, only used for when I'm doing this. Um, I mean, one, one of the salient things of human life before a couple thousand years, well, really before like a thousand years ago, is it was brutal, brutal. When you read about human societies anywhere, name, name a time, name a place, just all across the globe, this is pretty consistent. It, it was a very violent, brutal existence. And um, one of the things that you wanted to be real careful about back in the day, by which I mean 2,000, 6,000, 100,000, whatever years ago, uh, you probably didn't want too much power unless you were really ready to just fight every day of your life all the time. Because if, if you had power, if you were a leader, leader of your tribe, leader in your community, if as a woman, if you married the local warlord and now you had power or whatever, um, your life expectancy just got cut in half because now <laughs> everyone's after you. People want your goods. So like the other tribe's going to be attacking you. Very, very violent existence really for everyone, but especially anyone who was kind of at the top. This even extends to, <laughs> I remember when I was a, when I was in a teenager and in my early 20s, I thought, I'll read about the history of royalty, about princesses. What fun. Princess. <laughs> it was literally like, so yeah, so King so-and-so, he was stabbed to death by his brother, but then his brother was poisoned by his cousin's wife, who was then uh, beheaded by like the sister-in-law, obviously, who was then, um, you know, she was hung by this guy. I mean... It's ins- it was just all everyone murdering each other all the time. Same thing with the popes. Like it's so funny if you look at a chart of popes. Um, they I've seen a chart where they'll put a cross among the ones uh, who were murdered or martyred, <laughs> as we like to say. It's a nice nicer way of saying like he was just murdered. And and when you look at a chart of popes, it's like the first twenty cross 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 cross. <laughs> look back in the day. If you had power, if people, you know, if you if you were up there, if there were a lot of eyes on you, they all wanted to kill you. So really, the only question is, will I get stabbed? Will I get poisoned? I mean, because it's like <laughs> going to happen. To <laughs> Society was so brutal. Um, so we've got a, you know, about a million years of human evolution that is wired into your DNA as a woman that is like, Listen, don't do anything that would attract a lot of attention because it's like, you know, someone's going to 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 take a stone shiv and <laughs> stab us. And you can be like, hey, subconscious, listen, we're not cavemen anymore. I think it's I'm just going to get a bunch of hate on Instagram, honestly. And like it's it's you know, I'll just get annoying comments on Instagram. I think it's really going to be fine. But your subconscious doesn't know that. And so I really believe, and this sounds right, does it not? This sounds right. Oh, yeah. um, that Caitlin feels obliged to say that, but it does. No, no, I- it This sounds so right that, yeah, of course, as a woman, everything in your DNA is telling you, girl, girl, for your safety, don't do it. Like, don't, don't, don't <laughs> leave your down, house. Please. Don't like, just, <laughs> just say like, do, you do not want thousands of people to know who you are. That's very dangerous. Um, and, and just any kind of, even again, like filming a video. I mean, wh- the algorithm is going to bury my videos. So I could say, you know, hey, subconscious, <laughs> literally two people will see this unless my podcast listeners help me out and comment and like and share this with Taylor Swift. <laughs> no one's going to see this. Don't even worry. But still, it's, you know, it is putting your image on video to be put out there. And 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 again, this doesn't have to be anything with a traditional public presence. If you're giving a speech at your kid's PTA. If some of us are so sensitive, I mean, if you joined the local moms group and you're just going to a tea meeting where there will be six other women there, this could trigger that kind of, you know, I'm putting myself out there too much. This is scary. Um, You may very well have physical symptoms and and there's so much on, on YouTube and there's so much that's out there about this idea of TMS. Again, Dr. Sarno's books are really the gold standard. Just search, search, um, 
search Amazon for just Sarno by any one of his books. But he was a really good man, like a kind man, a, a doctor who genuinely wanted to help his patients. And so he wrote a lot about what you can do to move past it. It's actually really simple, just realizing that this is a this is your body's fears taking over and just not letting it have power and recognizing it for what it is. Again, you can read up on it if you care, but I feel a responsibility to just tell you that this happens. And th it happens to men too, but I, I see it happen in this area more often with women. And so it, if you're a woman and you have this unexplained pain, you, you've, you've gotten the MRIs, you've gotten the CT scans, you've gotten the blood work, everything is coming back normal, but it either an extreme fatigue or a pain is just really weighing you down, you need to look into this because it probably has something to do with that. Yes, you will feel a little crazy, a little crazy. Maybe that's the other reason I don't love to talk about it. Um, because there were just so many times that Joe was driving me to the ER, finding me on the uh, floor of the room or of the closet. And that, you know, it doesn't feel amazing to be like, it turns out I'm just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> turns out I'm just crazy. I would have, I think, <laughs> rather had some crazy diagnosis to save my ego. Like, yes, <laughs> yes, Jen has, you know, so-and-so syndrome, whatever. I mean, that's embarrassing to be, it's, it's not though, because again, this is, it's just butterflies in your stomach before public speaking writ large. You wouldn't feel embarrassed if you got butterflies in your stomach before going on stage. That's a physical thing that happens because of something psychological going on in your brain. So neither should you feel embarrassed if it turns out that some of the extreme fatigue or migraine headaches or back pain or inter interstitial cystitis or stuff like that, if it turns out that had a psychological root that was rooted in some sort of very deep fear that you hadn't processed and that you hadn't overcome, there's no shame in that. Trust me, I deal with it all the time. And so I wanted to share that with you guys that I woke up with that TMS, extreme fatigue. I, I had shortness of breath, uh, racing heart, just all sorts of stuff. And when I just said, nope, I know what this is. I'm moving past it. We're filming these videos. As soon as I walked outside into the sweltering heat <laughs> with all my makeup on, it lifted. No more physical symptoms, 100% gone. Like they all reversed. And that's how that stuff works. So look into it, TMS, uh, tension myositis syndrome. You can Google it. There are lots of books on it. Dr. John Sarno is the one who really pioneered it. But I, it, I like to bring this up once every few months to just make sure that you guys are aware of it. Before we go into the main topic, don't forget that probably my favorite app of all time is brain.fm. It does focus music so that you can and be way more productive than you think you could. If you need, if you have a mess to clean up in your kitchen, if you need to do some creative work, if you're trying to write that novel, set a timer on the Brain.fm app. It will play focus music. It's so good. And if you want to get the upgraded version, you get 20% off with the code Gen F. That's J E N. F that with Gen with one N. Gen F on Brain.fm. And we have the link in the show notes that includes that code. I think if you click on the link in the show notes, the uh, the code is already there. Okay, let's get to the main topic. You feel rushed, right? You feel rushed. I bet you, I, you have felt rushed in the past six hours. You felt like you didn't have time to put on earrings. You didn't have time to find that pair of shoes that you really like. You didn't have time to eat something decent for breakfast because you feel rushed. And I, I've talked before about how we need to reject that feeling. But the more I work on this, the more I realize that rejecting the feeling of being rushed will actually make you feel confident and powerful in all areas of life. It's like a shortcut to being a girl boss. If you commit that for the next week, I will not feel rushed. I will do what I wanted to do. I will make the time. I will make it happen. I will find time to do my makeup, to find that pair of shoes. I will not be rushed. It will transform your self-perception. You will be girl bossing all over the place <laughs> before you know it. This gives me an excuse to play uh, a, a DJ Khaled video. He was talking about his outfit. It was just, it was just his outfit. And they were zooming over his his outfit. He's wearing a pink 
suit. You'll be able to see it on YouTube. For those of you on audio, he's wearing a pink suit. He wanted his guy to video him. And I just love it. He was like, don't rush. Don't rush. Play it, Caitlin. I just, this is actually what made me think of this topic. What you see every day. Go slow, slow it up, slow it up, slow it. Take your time. One thing about greatness, don't rush it. Take your time. When, you, when you're natural and you're born with it, it's effortless. Take your time. I want DJ Khaled to be my life coach. God, I, yeah. I, I love this man so much. He's, you know, he's probably like 330 pounds wearing a pink suit. <laughs> and he's like, don't rush. This looks so good. This looks incredible. Um, that, I mean, that's a man who just like, he has life all figured out. So I, I saw that video where he's like, don't rush, don't rush, take your time. And he says that on Instagram a lot. He'll say, greatness can't be rushed. Greatness can't be rushed. And, and it, it re-inspired me to slow down, to slow down in, in my own life. And because here's the thing, feeling rushed is the exact same thing as feeling powerless. Think about that. If you feel rushed, you feel powerless. If you feel rushed, you feel powerless, right? Every time. And, and when you think about it, people who are very, they're, they're powerful, they're running things, they have, they have a lot going on. Um, they never feel rushed, right? It, it, notice when the Pope is out greeting people. He's not scrambling around. He's not just running rush, rush. Oh, oh, did I did I meet this person? Did I meet this? No. He's chilled out. He is not moving quickly. He's uh like the queen, the queen of England, God rest her soul. When you would see her meeting with people, she wasn't rushing around. She wasn't like, "Oh, oh, I'm so, oh, I'll be right there. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Excuse me." No. She was not in a rush. People with power don't rush. Powerful people don't rush. And I'm looking for a video. Actually, I just remembered that I have a really good video on this. Okay, I'm going to play the audio. We, I actually don't have the video to play on YouTube because I didn't prep this. Mm. I forgot I had this video. But okay, so this woman is talking about what she learned as a stage actress when she was playing high status versus low status characters. Now, in this, she is talking about seduction, how to be sultry. I'm just looking at it from the, do you feel empowered? Do you feel control over your life standpoint? But as a side note, it is kind of interesting that people who seem sultry and seductive, that does go hand in hand with confidence and power. It, when you call to mind someone, a, a film actress who is, oh, she's so seductive, she's so sultry, you would never imagine her rushing around like, oh my gosh, I gotta go, I gotta wear my car keys. Oh, no, are you, oh, I'm so late, I'm so sorry. Like, there is nothing sultry and seductive <laughs> no. about that. Okay, so we're going to listen to this um, TikTok a little bit. What is this gal's name? Margarita Nazarenko. Margarita Nazarenko. This is very interesting. We will take a listen. I'm across hot as opposed to cute. If you want to be that siren, I'm going to give you one tip. That's that's it. This is the tip. Listen, lean in. Lean in. Mommy's got, mommy's got some news for you, okay? <laughs> I did stage acting for three years. In that you learn movements, intricate body language. It was stage acting in London, okay? So you have to break it down. And this is the one thing you learn because a lot of drama, a lot of plays are based on status. People who are working class, people who are upper class, people who are seductive, people who are not. And this is what it breaks down to. If you want to be a sultry, seductive woman, with enticing feminine energy, not the cute girl feminine energy, but the siren feminine energy and seduce him, you have to start moving and talking a lot slower with poise and pauses. You're not going to run to places. You're not going to rush around and move your hair from your head. Oh, I don't know. Thank you. Oh, you come. No, you're going to take your time. You're going to make eye contact. Because not only is this confident and sultry behavior, it's also behavior of people who have confidence and speaking in terms of drama and period drama. It's the people who are of an upper class, right? Now, I don't care about all that, but 
it's people who are like this. When you lack confidence or when you want to play a character that's all over the place and skittish, you move faster. You talk faster. You apologize for what you say. So if you want to deploy that sultry goddess energy, take it down a notch. See, that I, I love what at a faster I, pace. I love what she points out that if so as as a play actress, that if you wanted to play someone who had did not feel powerful in their own life, did not feel confident. The first thing you do as an actress is you rush, especially for stage, because on stage you can't see small facial expressions. So if you walk on stage and you want to show someone who is downtrodden, who does not feel confident, who does not feel like she has agency over her own life, who has an external locus of control, you walk on that stage rushing around, apologizing, running, running around like a chicken with your head cut off. And I, I mentioned many, many episodes ago, I want to say last fall, I mentioned that I was going to try to feel rushed less. Now, emphasis on the word feel, because sometimes you just are rushed. I have six kids. I am running late for things <laughs> a lot. I travel a lot. I go to tour stops, such as all of the, again, uh, New York, Pittsburgh this weekend to to give you an example, I am on stage in Manhattan, New York City, Friday night. Caitlin and I probably will not get back to the Yale Club. Is it, yeah. that's, we're very fancy. Mm -hmm. We're staying at the Yale Club. We, we probably <laughs> won't get back until midnight. We have to be at the venue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania by 5 p.m. the next day for sound check. So we're, we're going to get up at like 4 a.m. to get to the airport. You, know, you, you got to have a flight with backups and, and all of that. So... Even though I don't have little kids anymore, I, there are still a lot of things in my life that would happen that would tempt me to feel rushed. And I'm not suggesting that you be late for anything. I'm not suggesting that you miss flights or like if you hear screaming coming from downstairs <laughs> that you ignore it. What I am suggesting is that you break that habitual feeling that you have to move, move, move fast, fast, fast. For example, uh, I, I know when your kids are little, if you are getting ready in the morning, you probably say, well, I, I don't have time to put on makeup. I mean, my kids are, they're banging at the door, outside the door. Like I hear them destroying my room as I'm getting ready. I don't have time to put on makeup. If you do a little exercise where, where you promise yourself you are going to stop feeling rushed, what you would do instead in that moment is you would say, you know what? They've already destroyed half the room. Um, I can put on some lip balm and a little bit of mascara because that only takes 40 seconds. And as long as no one's getting injured out there, everything sounds like it's basically keep on keeping on. I do have 40 seconds because that that's the thing. When you have been in a phase of life where you've been very overwhelmed for a very long time, feeling rushed almost becomes a habit. Mm -hmm. It's it's just something that you, you don't know what it's like not to feel rushed. Is it, you just always feel so rushed. And you start cutting corners in all these little areas. Like, I don't have time to scramble an egg. I don't have time to put on lip gloss. I don't have time to find my, my favorite pair of shoes. And what that does is all throughout the day, it is your your mind is sending you signals that you're powerless. Because if you don't have time to find your lip balm and just put on a little bit of lip balm, that that's pretty powerless. You don't have a lot of power over your life if you can't even do that. And so when all day you're like, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time. I, I'm so rushed, I'm so rushed. You are really reinforcing this idea in your own mind that you have no power over anything. And when you start stopping that and rejecting it, it will change your confidence level. It will change the level of leadership that you bring with your kids and, and in your life. It will change everything. When you stop and say, okay, all right, I do need to leave, but how long does it take to scramble an egg? Put a number on it. Really, how long? If you time it, I think it takes about three minutes. You can get it done in three minutes. And when you run that calculation, okay, do I really not have three minutes? Is three minutes really going to make or break my entire day here? 
you might be surprised. You might find, you know what? I Yes, I can. I can scramble that egg. And when we feel rushed because we are worried about other people being annoyed, let's say your husband wants to go, um, said, I don't know anything about this situation. <laughs> your husband wants to leave and he's like, what, you know, when are you going to be ready? I wanted to leave. In order to not feel rushed in those moments when someone else is waiting on you and is like wishing that you would hurry up and, and you're, you're babysitting their emotions, you're in their head thinking about how annoyed they are, it forces you to become more of a leader to say, you know what, I'm going to take the time I need to get ready in a way that would make me feel happy and fully present in this evening. And I, as a, a leader of my own life, I take the responsibility of having this conversation with whoever is waiting on me and, and just telling them what's going on and thanking them for their patience. And I will take the time that I need to get this done. The, a, a friend of mine is really good about this. She uh, she was getting ready. Uh, she was giving this big fancy speech and there were people there to pick her up and the people really wanted to leave. They really wanted to get there even though they were doing fine on time. Her like handler, whatever you call it, people. <laughs> they were getting very stressed and I was getting stressed out because I babysit other people's emotions and <laughs> I have a wiring where it is it is fully my responsibility to make sure everyone in every room is completely happy at all times and I will say anything and I will do anything to make this happen. And so they, they were getting pretty stressed about her not leaving but she wanted to she wanted her photographer to get some shots of her in this nice hotel and so she was like oh, I just think let's see should we do one in front of that really good flower arrangement and I'm about to have a stroke because I'm like <laughs> they really they wanted to leave 10 minutes ago like we need to go and she just so graciously walked over to them and said um hey it was part of my plan to just get some shots in this great hotel that I can use just for some portfolio work would you guys mind waiting another five minutes and you know I know we're 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 way ahead on time we'll definitely get to the venue an hour before I even need to be there could you guys give me another five minutes and they were totally chill. They were totally fine. She took the time she needed and then she floated on into the car. If that were me, I would have been knocking things down, sweating off my makeup, <laughs> dropping things, messing up my hair in my blind panic to make sure that I had everybody happy with me getting in that car at the exact time that they wanted me in the car. And when I saw how my friend moved, you know what phrase came to mind was queen energy. That's oh, yeah. queen energy. Queen energy is when you you have this attitude like they can wait, not in a rude way. I, I don't mean to suggest that you disrespect people's time. I mean, you are conscious of people's time and you want to honor that. And you are also balancing that with what you need to do to feel prepared for whatever you are heading into. So if your kids are hungry, they want breakfast. It's actually, it's not doing your kids any favors to, to be in a blind panic and rushing around. And if you're, let's say you're like me, you like doing your makeup, it makes you feel better about your day, it makes you feel like less of a goblin when you look in the <laughs> mirror. Um, and, and I used to do this. I'd be like, oh, the kids are hungry. I don't have time. I don't have time. And I'd run downstairs and I'd be throwing things together and the kids are whining. And so then that makes me throw things together even more. Well, now I have brought a powerless, high tension feeling to our house. And so that adds to the kids' tension. And now we're all tense. And then I start yelling about something. They start crying. It just, it starts this cycle of tension. Whereas I finally, sort of at the end of, of the little kid years, I, I stepped into, frankly, queen energy. And, and I would just take a second and turn to the kids and say, listen, I know you're hungry. I'm just going to finish getting ready. I have some great ideas about what we're going to do. And I'll, I'll get to it in one second. Let me just finish getting ready. And then I would do my makeup. And it would seriously take six or seven minutes. We're not talking about an hour and a half for a photo shoot. I mean, it was just like <laughs> little mascara, little lip balm, brush my hair, find something that I like to wear. Seven minutes. You can easily do that in seven minutes. That's not going to make or break anything in terms of people waiting on you. But 
it brought this whole new energy when I would go downstairs feeling good. I felt like I looked pretty good. I felt like I liked the outfit I was wearing. And 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 again, you can shower at another five minutes it, if you need to take a quick shower. You can get this done in that amount of time. These aren't enormous amounts of time, but deciding that you will take them, that five extra minutes in your morning routine is not going to make or break anything for your family, that they can wait in, in a loving, polite, I care about your needs way, mm-hmm. you guys can wait because I can serve you better if I take this additional few minutes. And again, if your husband's waiting for you for a date night, like we will have more fun. I will be more present on this date night if you just wait a few more minutes while I finish this. And, and then another thing starts to happen. Ironically, when you refuse to feel rushed and make that a habit, you, you actually tend to be late for things less often. Isn't that interesting? Because what happens mm-hmm. is because you have a more powerful mindset, generally, you start to feel like, I can control things in my life. I can schedule this at a different time. I can tell my kids they, they just need to occupy themselves for 10 minutes while I finish getting ready. I can do this. I can have a conversation with my husband about how long it takes me to get ready and get places. Because you feel empowered, generally, you start making space for the things that make sense for you to do. Because think about it. When you walk around in a powerless mentality all day, every day, you feel a lack of confidence. You feel insecure and powerless. You are more likely to be late for things in that mentality because you weren't thinking ahead about the dentist appointment because you were busy, you know, returning that phone call, not when it was a good time for you, but because when it seemed like they wanted you to return the phone call and then, you know, not planning out when you're going to feed the kids, but just letting it be whenever they seem to want you to feed them rather than what worked for your schedule. And you're running to this and you're running to that. Well, you're much more likely to be late for that dentist appointment because you were running about around people pleasing instead of thinking a couple steps ahead in your schedule and making powerful choices about how the day was going to play out. When when you live in that I will not be rushed mentality, you're sitting there in in the bathroom in the morning, you know, putting on your favorite pair of jeans, finding a t-shirt. Ooh, this one only has three stains on it. This is amazing. <laughs> like putting on something that you feel nice about. And while you are in those calm, non-rushed, non-scurrying moments, you also you'll tend to remember things like, oh, oh. The dentist appointment is today. That's right. Okay, okay. So I should leave, but I should leave at 1.30. Okay, so I've got that in my head. I should leave at 1.30. And then because you are more empowered and present in every moment throughout the day, because you're not rushing around like like you're a like you're a downstairs servant in a British play, <laughs> you then are more likely to just notice what time it is and think, oh, you know what? I wanted to change shirts before we go to the dentist. It is now 120. I think I'll take a minute to do that. That is what starts happening when you refuse to be rushed. In order to to live a life where you move slowly like the queen or the pope or someone that that, that TikToker was talking about, that an upper class person, a Downton Abbey person in a British play, in order to move that way, you have to feel powerful. Powerless people feel rushed queens don't feel rushed because they have the power to arrange life however they want to to get done whatever they need to get done queen energy is slow energy queen energy is powerful energy queen energy is intentional energy it, it is not like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'll do this. I'll do this. Like you're spilling your purse because you're running because someone wants you to do something. <laughs> That's not queen energy. Queen energy is slow and it is deliberate and it is powerful. And yes, it, you can do it even if you have a bunch of little kids. I, I would say for those of you who have a lot of little kids, it is that it's probably the hardest for you guys to execute this, but you guys are the ones who need to do it the most. Do not let your village-less, support system-less circumstances make you feel rushed all the time. Of all people, you need to do a week-long commitment where you say from, from now 
or just until the end of the week from now for just a couple of days. I will not feel rushed. I will not let myself feel rushed. I will reject that. And I will be, I will feel powerful to do whatever I need to do to change my circumstances so that I don't have to feel rushed. Whatever I need to talk to my family about, talk to my boss about, talk to myself about, I will change my circumstances so that if I want to take an extra seven minutes on clothes, on makeup, on a shower, it, it, if I want to um, watch a show in the evening without staying up too late, if I want to take a few minutes to check Instagram, I can do that and I will do it without scurrying around and apologizing and I will do that in an empowered way. And again, watch how you start using your time more wisely. Just like you, you are less likely to be late for things, you are less likely to waste tons of time mindlessly scrolling social media because that that's also a powerless thing. We tend to lose track of time and scroll, scroll, scroll when we feel powerless, right? Think about that. Yeah. Right. Because mm -hmm. because let, so Don't let's say <laughs> let's say you have a problem, but you feel empowered to solve it. You're, you're like, yeah, I know exactly what I need to do. I'm even looking forward to doing it. I just have to solve this problem. You're not spending three hours on TikTok. You're getting the thing done. When we scroll is when we have problems that we feel powerless about. And so we jump on TikTok. And three hours later, we're like, well, now I know how to do a beachy wave, <laughs> but now it's two o'clock in the morning thing. and tomorrow is going to be a rough morning. <laughs> we mindlessly scroll when we feel powerless. And the more you step into this queen energy, power energy, the less you will find yourself running late, mindlessly scrolling because you will be attacking the problems in your life in a power, powerful way. And again, this all starts with reject the feeling of being rushed. If you just commit to that and nothing else, you will actually have to transform to be a different, more queen energy, more power person in, in order to, to do it. You won't be able, you, let, me, let me put it this way. You cannot both feel powerful and feel rushed at the same time. These are mutually exclusive things. So when you make the commitment that I will not feel rushed, you will have to find a way to feel powerful in order to get that done. So rejecting that feeling of being rushed is a shortcut to queen energy. It's a shortcut to girl boss energy. So that is my challenge to you. No matter what is going on in your life, no matter how crazy it is, and in fact, I am especially talking to people who are in survival mode, who are in a crazy season. Give me three days. Maybe a week is too much for you. Give <laughs> me three days where you say, I, I will not feel rushed. I won't do it. If, I, if I'm on my way home and my husband is watching the kids and there was a lot of yelling when I called to check in and a lot of crashing and the sound of water splashing, <laughs> but I would really like to stop at Taco Bell on the way home. I, I, I'd love... I'd love to see, you know, how, how they're combining their four different ingredients, you know, this week. I'd love to stop by Taco Bell and get their new colon blaster. I would, that would be incredible. Your instinct will be to be like, I'm rushed. I don't, I don't have time. I don't have time. My husband is getting so annoyed watching these kids. I don't have time. I don't have time. You're going to reject that. You're going to say, nope, nope. Not only am I going in to... Taco Bell for the intestinal explosion supreme, <laughs> but I, I'm going to eat inside just to prove to myself that I do have the time. Because let's say, it, again, put numbers on it. It really helps to put numbers on it. So let's say going through the drive through that would probably be about six minutes. If I eat inside, we're, still, we're probably talking only 10 minutes. It's probably only four more minutes. So not only am I stopping at Taco Bell, but I will eat inside to prove to myself that I do not need to rush. And I can actually take time for these little niceties that add a lot of value to my life and don't take a ton of time. And I can do that because I have queen energy. I don't have rush energy. I have queen energy. All right, that is it for this episode. You guys go out there, shine your queen energy. No more being rushed. Make that commitment. You're, you're, at least for three days. Give me three days. 
you will not feel rushed at all. You will reject that feeling completely and watch how your life totally changes. JF Comedy Tour is where you get your tour tickets. Like and share my tour promo videos. Like and share them extensively. And I will be back with you next week here on The Jen Fulbiler Show.